there were two warring parties, Congress and Hindu, Congress and uh, Muslim League. The other parties, where there were some regional parties, there was this Hindu Mahasabha, there was a Kali Dal, there were other uh, small parties, there was this uh, Unionist Party in Punjab, undivided Punjab, but they were insignificant. Main parties were Congress and Muslim League. So the British government decided to send a very high power committee called the Cabinet Mission to India in 1946 to decide or to discuss with the Indian parties and find out how exactly India could be given independence. Till that time, there was no talk of partition. People were living reasonably peaceably in all the parts of India, including Bengal, Punjab, Sindh, all parts of India, people were living reasonably peaceably. Then in 1946, when this cabinet mission was discussing uh, holding talks with the Congress and the Muslim League, they hit upon a plan which was called the grouping plan. According to this grouping plan, India would remain undivided. But certain things would be done. There would be a weak center. The states or the provinces would have a lot of power. But on the whole, India would remain undivided. Both Congress and Muslim League, they gave their consent to this. But even after that, Nehru, for some strange reason, and this has been recorded by Molana Azad in his autobiography, India Wins Freedom, that Nehru, for some strange reason, he resigned from this decision of the Congress and he said, no, no, we had said so, but uh, we are not going to uh, remain stuck to it. When we go to the Constituent Assembly, we'll consider ourselves completely unfettered by all the, by all uh, previous commitments. Now, Jinnah was in some difficulty within his party as a result of his giving consent to this cabinet mission proposal of grouping. Now, Jinnah got an opportunity and he said that nothing doing, you can't believe this Hindu Congress, we are getting out of it, we also withdraw our uh, consent to the cabinet mission grouping plan. As a result of that, the entire scheme of keeping India undivided collapsed. This is not very well known because thereafter history was written by Nehru acolytes and people who had on whom Nehru had showered um, various kinds of favors. So this great feat of Nehru of resigning from that thing and spoiling the chance of having an undivided India, it collapsed. By 1947 March, the Congress was so demoralized and the leaders were so eager because they could see independence coming and they could see their becoming the heads of the nation. They were so eager to get power that they consented to partition. They consented to partition all this while, which they were what they were trying to avoid. In 1940, Nehru had said partition, demand for partition is fantastic nonsense. Gandhi had said that vivisect me, but not India. Same Gandhi, same Nehru, same Patel, they accepted partition. The important thing is that these people came from states which would not have been affected by partition. Gandhi, Gandhi and Patel came from Gujarat. Gujarat would not be affected by partition. Nehru came from UP, would not be affected by partition. The worst affected states would have been Bengal and Punjab. And Bengal and Punjab were not represented in the Congress. There was Acharya Kriplani, who was from Sindh, but Acharya Kriplani was a very weak man. He was a very good man, a true Gandhian, but he was a very weak man. He could not get one word of, uh, one word of his into the thinking of the Congress.